Hey guys, how you doing today? I'm David Winstead, and today I'm gonna uh, show you how I get started in Emergen. First thing you wanna do is once Emergen loads, um, on the left-hand side, you'll see the blue button that says uh, new project. I let go of that, okay. And why don't you start off with this, and it will probably, yours will be playing by default, this little default here, okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause that and go up to view. And I think I might have it set on high quality. Now, it will run slow. I'm on a laptop, so I'm going to put it on low or hit control one on your keyboard. And now if I hit play, it runs a little bit better. Not much, but, you know, it's okay. Okay, the few things I'm going to do by default, I'm going to take the, um, well, I'm just going to leave everything that's on here. This is what I have on simulation. Bounty box, which is that you can press B on the keyboard to turn it on and off. I use that quite often. Um, okay, and one thing I like to do is start from scratch most of the time. So if you select everything over here in the node graph area or hit Control A on your keyboard and hit delete. Okay, you get a few little warnings over here telling you uh, you need a couple of things. But first thing I'm gonna do is hit pause because. Um, just so when I start a new one, it won't be automatically trying to play. Okay. So the first thing you want to add is I'm going to add a shape. And you add a shape primitive. And that will allow you to add a couple little things. Like it starts off a sphere, but um, we can keep it at that. Or we'll just go with a torus, donut shape. And I'm going to go ahead and make it at uh, radius of 2 and make this at 0.2. So it'll be thin. You'll see that in a second. And then you have shape here. And if you drag from shape, and as soon as you let go of the mouse, it'll give you all the things that you can add to that, that you can connect to. It's actually called a pin. I'm going to create a volume in this one. So smoke and fire. And then this emitter, you drag out of it, and it only gives you one thing. That's the submission. So that's what submits. And then we're doing volume and not particles in this demonstration. Let go and you can go to scene, but if you use volume processing first, there's a few items in here, like this volume post process. You have motion blur, sharpen and dilate. Um, you might want to use those. And also you have these slicing mask and I'll show you what those are a little bit later. They're very useful. So it's good to have that. And you drag out the volume next, and we want it to be seen. And there's a few things you need in your scene. Uh, you got to have shading. Otherwise, you won't have anything to tell you tell the Emergen what color the smoke and fire is, mainly fire in this case. So there's your shading. And shading needs lights, which it tells you over here. Connect the light to it. So you can just drag out of that and let go and you have all the lights Emergen supply. So you have point, directional, ambient, and spot. I'm going to go with directional and you see the scene immediately starts up. And one thing I like to do too is I'm going to slide this over. You can use your middle mouse button, click and drag to drag your window around. Your left click and hold will rotate around the object you got selected. And those are the only ones I'm going to use. And you can use your Mouse wheel to scroll in and out, to zoom in and out. There you go. Zooming sounds better. All right. One thing I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this directional light out of here. Like just move it out of the way. Because it doesn't matter where this is at, it's going to affect the scene no matter where it's at. Um, the other lights, like spotlight, that one, uh, where it's at and where the point light is, um, determines how it's going to work. Directional light is different. And you can also add. Like drag from light again and add an ambient light. This will help fill in the dark areas and shadows that the directional light um, causes. But I go into the ambient light every single time and whatever the default um, intensity is, I cut it to say half. So 0 0.250 of what they set it to. And then directional light might leave it the same. Sometimes I cut these down to half of what they have it as well. Maybe a little bit more like uh, 0.600. Okay, leave everything else the same. All right, so this is the basics of Wall Run Emergen. And 
don't matter where you put these at, there's a cool little trick that they give you an Emergen that will help even these out. So if they got like this and you select everything or hit control A, and if you right click on any of these darker areas that don't have a parameter, any of them, it won't happen if you click anywhere in here. So you won't get the option I'm going to show you. If you right click here, you'll have auto arrange, which is alt A. So I'm going to hit control A to select everything. Alt A, and what it does, it'll align everything for you. Sometimes it might put things in the wrong place, but once you get it aligned, you can reposition it. It'll just kind of help you out. So you don't have to worry about where you place things as you add them. All right, so what we're going to do is we have a shape here, and you notice that you can't see the shape, even though if you go to view, shape, shapes are actually turned on in the view, but you still can't see that shape. So if you go to let me see if it's emitter. Under emitter, you under each node, you'll have these tabs. And visual is what I'm looking at. So there it is. So under the emitter volume, if you go to the end, visuals, show emitter. So we can turn that on. And I'm just going to click this Z arrow and pull it up. All right. That's what we got. One thing I'm going to do too is see how this, this is the volume. Uh, boundary. Uh, let's see what they call it really. If you go to simulation and go to the simulation size, the first tab, you'll see that the voxel count, this is the the box that it generates in, is default to 128 to 128 by 256. I like to start off with 200 and you hit tab to get to the next item and then make this, um, we'll just make it all, maybe I'll make it a little bit taller, 250. Okay, and you have to apply the new resolution right there. Okay, so now we got a more more of a square, but a little bit taller box. <clears throat> this is kind of where I start. And one thing too, if you want a ground just to build this, I'm gonna slide these, move these three up, and you'll see skybox and ground. If you pull the ground and let go, you have only have one choice, and now you'll have a ground. Um, I don't use the skybox. Hardly ever. If you drag it out and add Skybox, um, Skybox has to have a light. So I'm going to switch these around, put ambient at the top. And I think Sky, yeah, you can only have directional light in a Skybox for the sun. So I'm just going to drag it up to this one that I already have. And you'll see there's, there's a Skybox. Since I'm not going to use that, I'm just going to. Click on it and delete, or you can just turn it off. And, okay, for the ground, you'll see how the ground goes off into the background. Wherever, I like to go to um, this ground lit radius here. See, it's set to 50,000. Bring that all the way to where you like it, like just a little bit, of, little bit lit up, and you'll get this look. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it even 100. There you go. And the ground shadow is what the directional light or lights will cast on the ground. Uh, you won't see it until you start emitting particles or volume at least. And one thing you do is you say, of course, no ground, but you got the ground still on. You got checkerboard and you can choose what the checkerboard colors are. So if you want it to be anything you want, really. You could do that. And then you could choose the darker color as well. Like that. And you could choose the scale. So if you want it to be a bunch of little ones or a really big one, you can do that. So that's not bad. Say if you make it um, 0.1, something like that. But I'm going to go back to the default which is the grid. You also have noise. Not sure why you'd ever use that for the ground. Um, a uniform color, which is fine, but you'll see these, this happening, these lines back here for the gradient. I think if you go to high quality, maybe that's cleared up. No, it's not. So I don't like to use that one because if you render it with that background, say if you want to display it on YouTube like I'm doing now, it'll 
render out those those gradient banding. So I don't like to use that one at all. The grid one's probably the, the one I like to use the most. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that, bring that back up, there we go. Let me kind of get it right about there so that my box looks like it fits inside of the grid. It's kind of cool thing to do. All right, all right, let's get on with how this thing works. Okay, so now I've got a ground. And I'm going to go ahead and select everything again. Hit Alt-A to align it. And let's go ahead and hit play. But you can hit spacebar to do the same thing. Okay. Now see. Not much is happening here. Did I turn the view back down to low? I did. Okay. So it's not running very much right now. And let's figure out why that is. To go to the volume. See what we can crank up here. Okay, fuel emission. I'm gonna change that from add to replace. And what that does, that replaces your object with fire. So you'll get more of it at that point. And you automatically have smoke. I think the fire is actually generating that. And let's see, we're gonna change that to maybe 10 percent fuel maybe 20 okay let's go ahead with that 20 and if you don't want to emit smoke you can say no emission but the thing about that is it'll still emit smoke because the fire is generating smoke in simulation under let's see the simulation Combustion. Okay, so under simulation, the combustion tab, you'll say you see generated smoke is set to fifteen percent. You mouse over any of these settings, most of them will tell you what they are. So this is quality of smoke generated by combustion. So that tells you that the fire is generating that smoke. You could bring the smoke dissipation, how much it fades out over time. Um, you could bring that to say one hundred percent. And I'm gonna hit R. If you hit R, it'll refresh um, and start all over. Okay. Like so. I'm gonna go while I'm in simulation. If you go to time control, I'm doing 24 frames per second video. So if, if you want to put this into a 24 per second video, you know to comp that in. If you go to 24, you see it goes a little bit too wild. But the cool thing about the guys that made Embergen, you could type in math. You could put math equations in almost every field I've ever tried uh, in their system. So if I want to be like make the animation um, twice as slow, so when I bring it into, say, DaVinci Resolve or something to edit this, I can um, change the speed better. So you can say, say 24 frames times two and hit enter and it'll give it to you without you having to use a calculator or anything and it works for everything um so 24 times four that'd be 96. that'll make things run really slow but the simulator you'll have a lot more detail in the simulator by doing that export it at this high frame rate and then set it at whatever frame rate your film is it's going to look so much better but i'm gonna go ahead and do 24 times two which would be 48 Make it run a little bit faster for this demonstration. Okay, so you see there's not a lot of detail in the fire right now. So what we can do is go to the emitter volume and see where it says forces. This represents represents any force data that will be applied to this emitter. So drag out of the forces pin and let go and you'll see all the forces you can use. You got a point force, line, whatever that one is, noise, vector field, which you won't use. Which I've never used, and then force uh, vertices is that vertices vertices? I don't know what else. Anyway, um, I'm gonna use noise. Okay, so now we've added noise, and if I hit R to refresh that, let's start over again. And see how you have that? How you have this? Oh, uh, I'm moving the noise. That's something you don't want to do. I'm gonna turn off these arrows just for this purpose, and that's called manipulators or Shift Q. Okay. 
All right. So you'll see uh, there is something happening here. Not a whole lot, though. There's more in the smoke. Let's change some values in this noise. Let's see here. All right, now the scale is at 8 for the noise. I'm going to put it to 10 for the time being. We're going to lower that down a little bit later. Um, you can actually see the noise. Let me move this up. You see how the noise looks right here. And one thing to make this more detailed is change the octaves up to at least two. And then I like to say, say if this is two, it's the default is two, so I make that three. You get a little more, a little finer detail happening. And animation speed, that's how fast it's playing the app. So if you don't want the noise to animate, you just put zero if you want it to go really fast, higher number. And that's how much noise is moving inside of this. So you're starting to get a little bit more detail there. Yeah, but I'm not going to do it that fast. I'm going to do about maybe three. Okay. And let's see what else we got in here. Nothing else I'm going to use here. All right. So one thing you can do is to, you'll see that there, that is, um, that's noise added to the force of the emitter itself. And that just adds noise to that emitter, so only here. If you add noise or a force to the simulation, it covers the entire simulation. So if you have more than one volume or particles in that, this one will affect that. So you can either drag out of this and add one of these, or you can um, right click and copy or control C, and then right click and paste or control V and paste. It up here as well, so we'd have the same settings and see what happens when we plug it into this forces. See, it's affecting more now. I mean, really, if you turn this one off, you probably won't see much of a difference, but I keep it on because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit stronger, seems like, when you have the same settings when I copy and paste it out of one to the other. Okay. So I'm going to go into this noise and see how the scale was 10. I'm going to make it half of that. Let's see what we get. As it will be smaller noise now. So you'll see the smoke will have smaller curls. If you want to see what a higher rate, I'm going to put it on 20 just to show you what it will do. you start seeing it whip all around. You'll have bigger curls in the smoke. So if you're looking for something like that, say you're not going to use the fire at all and you just need to see the smoke like this. That's how you would achieve that. Okay. Put it back down to, let's do six this time. And I'm going to take those octaves off and put that back to default of two. And slow the animation down. A little bit slower, which the default is here. Okay. I'm actually going to change the seed so the noise won't be exactly the same as that noise. So I just pop in a number, it don't matter what it is, you can just say two. I usually just do a random number. All right. Um, you can add as many forces, I do believe, to any of these. So if I want to add another force, like line, you see what line does. Um, there's this line pointing in a certain direction that it's moving in. And cool thing about line, I'm going to see if I can move this down so you can see doesn't show it. Um, one thing it doesn't show, the twist, if you add a twist string, say one, you should be able to see, there it is, there's a little rotation arrow, so you know which direction it's rotating, and you'll look, see how the flames are actually rotating around, especially if you put the camera on this. See they're rotating around that way, or if you go underneath, you can get some really, really cool effects and angles like this. That it looks. This is a good way to actually see how how the twist is doing. And as you can see, one is quite a bit of twist. If you go too far, it will start ripping apart pretty much. It won't stay in one spot unless you use repel, which if you want it to repel, it repels to that dotted line in the middle of the arrow. So if you go out, it's gonna start pushing, pushing this all apart. And if you repel inward 
it will pull all the, you know, all the smoke, all the volume to the middle. I'm going to pull out here so you can kind of see what it's doing. Right now you're getting this double looking effect because it's going too fast um, and doing one of those settings. It's probably the push strength. Uh, let's set the push strength to zero. Okay. Let that cool down a bit or hit R to refresh again or restart, reset. And that's kind of cool. If we let's go to the top view here, or you can hit number seven on your keyboard, that will go to top. One is another view, and three is another view. Too close. So you can hit uh, uh, one, three, seven, and nine on the corners of your number pad to switch up different views. So I go to number seven because that's the top, and I'll move it over a little bit. I'm going to zoom down. Okay, so. Now, what we have, let's see, let's change that twist to one, or better yet, let's make it really small, like 0 0.3. There we go. We're starting to get some of that noise back in, and it's still twisting. So, so you got a little bit of twist effect and the noise, it all adds up and makes it look a little bit better. If you want to push the the fire up a little bit higher, you can go use the push strength, but I wouldn't go to one. I mean, you can go, you can type in a number two. So if you want to go crazy, see it's going to get crazy effect there. Uh, let's see, let's go to point two maybe. I'm going to hit R to reset. Let's see what we get. Okay, I guess we'll stick we'll stick with that for now. Maybe make that point one and change that twist to point two. And we're gonna do it. Not gonna do a repel strength or anything else right now. There's a lot of little settings. All right, I'm about to take that push off. Just leave the the twist strength. Looks like it's going up high enough by itself. Okay. At any time, if you want to click in any of the open place up here in the node graph to get rid of the, say that dotted line right there, you can just click anywhere and now you can move this around and just look at what you're creating. Okay, let's see, what else are we gonna do here? Um, uh, oh yeah, one thing I almost forgot about is, let's see, so we got recovered, adding a force, the shape, adding two different types of forces to the simulation itself. All right, let's look at, let me get a simulation, see if this is in here. I uh, don't know if this is in visual. Nope. Combustion. I do want to come in here though. Um, we talked about a little earlier, if you go to the emitter volume right here, you'll see that you got this fuel emission. It was on add by default. And we're not adding enough. See, you got to crank this this up high to get to get it add a lot. Let's do twenty, one hundred, or click on the little. This will revert it back to its default, which was twenty five. Let's change that to uh, two hundred, or is that too high? I can't remember. Five hundred. 1,000, 1,000 might be too much. Let's go 700. Well, that's what you want. That'd be fine. Okay. Hmm. Maybe 720 for fuel rate. And see how I still have, I say no emission on the smoke, but you still see smoke, right? Um, Okay, let's go to, so now we can go to, we'll concentrate on emitter volume and simulation. Click on simulation. Now, if you take this generated smoke completely down to zero, the smoke should disappear. Yep. So now we just got fire ring slightly turning around using that line twist. Okay. So we got that. 
All right, so if you wanted to put smoke back in, you can. Just say we're going to crank it up to 100, the default max. You'll generate a lot more, you'll generate a lot more smoke this way. And one thing also about the, the smoke, let's see where it's doing this. If you want to, I forgot we had dissipation on. We said that the default, the smoke's not fading out as it gets to the top. So if we crank up that dissipation to 100, you'll start seeing the smoke start to fade out closer to the top here. And through my experimenting, if you go past 105, say 106, the smoke almost completely disappears. You'll have like a little bit of smoke at the tips right here. So what you want to do is work your way from 106 to 105 and see that's a big difference. 106 to 105. But cool thing is it almost dissipates right before it hits the top here. Which is good. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Maybe 105 point point five. No? 105 point two. Oh, it didn't do it. It did 105.2. There you go. That's not bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and open one more there. Um, 105.1. I think I'm going to do it like that. Okay. So that covers that. Um, flame intensity is how strong the flame is. And if you intensify that, naturally it's going to kick up a lot higher <laughs> so if you turn all the way down to zero you turn down the intensity and you'll see the fire go up and go away which you know if you want to do something like that you can have a boost do like a little boost to 100 and back to zero hold it for a little bit so you can do that down here in the timeline if you want to add something like that which i'll cover in the next video okay let me hit this to put it back to default Expansion is, it'll expand naturally like that. <laughs> there might be a reason, say you want to do an explosion, but it would just keep on expanding by a certain amount. I turn it back down to zero and you'll see it come back. And see it filled this whole entire box up with that. Right. So you might have a time where you want to boom, do it like that and then bring it back in. And the cool thing is it generates smoke as it's burning out. So there might be a reason to do that as well. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna click on this to put it back at default. It covers everything I want to do here. I don't think there's anything else I'm gonna cover on this node for right now. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, let's go to, let's see. See if I can find where gravity is. I think it's inside. I think it's inside um, emitter volume under, let me get a mission real quick. Okay. This one, yeah, this emission gradient is how, that's another how wide. You turn it all the way down, see what you get. I mean, you learn more by just experimenting with all these settings like I did. They have it at 0.5. So 0.5 is their default. If you put it at one, I would go up by points when I'm testing things and see that's at one. And that's not bad. Okay. Let's see. What else we got to get here? I got to touch special. So at this point, you could turn the emitter off because you can kind of see what shape is emitting. I mean... You can put it back on. You can change the color of it. So if you want to make it black or red or, you know, say you want it to be the blue, like, like it's the fuel, you know, it's fuel in this fire. Okay. I'm just going to turn it off. Uh, one thing you can do, uh, it says emit light. 
and it has this emissive intensity of zero. If you crank this up, you'll see, let me turn it back on, see what it's doing. Uh, if I turn that off, it'll turn back whatever color you got the emitter color set to. Turn it back on, and say you want to make this really crank up, I'm going to go 200, and see how it lights up. It will light up the fire and smoke because that's lit up emitting light and you can change the color of this of course go around the wheel so the cool thing is say we put it that blue light we did before and we turn off show emitter the emitted light will still be there but you won't see the emitter shape but sometimes you might want that you crank this back down see say you want just a little bit Sometimes I like a little bit of that blue to kind of show there is some fuel that is driving this fire. So it's kind of cool looking like that. Um, all right. Okay, so if you wanted to render this out, you go to scene, this last node didn't touch, and you, you only have render. There's that one. And to render something, you have to have a camera. Sorry, it's going to tell you that. And there's your camera. Yes, that's the camera. And if you go up here uh, where it says default on this, this is how you switch to your camera. Oh, you can also click this little plus in the top view of the camera node. This will actually switch back and forth between the the default and the camera you created. And I'm not sure if you can create another camera out of this. No, you can't. The one thing I'm going to do, put the camera up top here and hit R to restart that. And that's where you can really see the emitted color. Boom. I'm going to switch this to high quality. So this will look smoother and hit restart again. Move a little bit closer. Of course, I'm running this on a little laptop that doesn't have much of a graphics card. It's not really meant for this. But I'm sitting here doing that just to show that it will run on a lower end laptop, believe it or not. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my default camera and click off of that. Okay, so if you wanted to render this out, of course, you got to go to your camera and put it where you want your camera to be. and Say you want it to stay here and not accidentally move it. Click on the camera node and you got lock camera. So once you lock that, and let me go back to view here and switch this quality back low. So it'll run a little bit smoother. Okay. So so now you can't you can't scroll with your mouse wheel or click around and do anything because you locked the camera, but you can control it over here using these parameters and that's probably the best thing to do so you don't accidentally move it because you can always switch back to default to do any other work okay let's go back to render all right down here um one thing you i'm gonna delete this because it gives it to you by default i'm gonna say add a capture you want to render all and if you click on this little thing that says show hide channels, you'll just see red's going red, green, and blue, and so forth. Um, there's no reason to open that there. And it starts off with Flipbook. That's only used to export for game engines like Unreal Engine 5 or other game engines. But we want to export the sequence. Okay. And it gives you this width and height. But um, say you want to do 1080. Just click on that one. You can also type your own in, and you can, when you type your own in, it'll give you a little plus sign to save your own. Like I saved this one, this um, 2560 by 1080. That's my wide monitor at home on my big computer. I'm gonna switch back to that, and you choose a directory. I just put it on my desktop, create a new folder, don't even name it. Just click new like that, and that's set up directory. And how many frames you want to render out? I'm just going to do 20 real quick. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave all that as is. And then let's see, catch tags, export. Yeah, that's everything. And now if you go to camber, one thing is when you set up the image size in the render, you have to go to the camera as well and go to the display tab and do the same thing. Make sure that camera is set to the same size. Probably something they should have done that if you change the render size here, the camera that's connected to it like that should maybe also be updated or it give you a little pop-up that says, do you want to update the size of the camera as well? And you can say, yes, that's what I would probably do. All right. Um, let me go back to camera view and let's move this camera now because we've changed the size of the render out. So now we want to go to transform and pull this back. That go up some. Okay. So you have this, um, cool thing I like to do too in under display tab, you have perspective, you got the field of view It's set on 60. So if you go to like, say if you go all the way up to 120 and then go back to your um, transition, I'm gonna turn the camera lock back off so I can just go ahead and just zoom in with my, move around with this. Um, you get some really cool effects, like how I've made some of my tunnels like that. See what I'm getting at? And if I go back to display and pull that view down to the default, hit that, you'll see how close it looks like it is. You don't get any kind of warped effect, but if you do that, you're way up here. So you can get some really nice tunnels like that. And then I'm hit B to turn that off. And I'm gonna turn off the ground. Just click on the turn off there. So you'll get a tunnel kind of like that. So if you wanna export this, uh, one thing you can do before you export as well, I'm going to hit um, pause that, start it over, go to simulation, and say you want to export it at a better quality than what you're seeing. Go to um, the size here, and under upscaling, switch it to one of these. Four, you need a very strong computer to go to, and even three. I'm just going to go to two. And what you'll see, let me switch it back real quick to show you. See the voxel, voxel count? is 12,085. That's how many voxels are gonna have to be generated. And if they go to number two, see it will go from 12.85 million to 102 million. That's way more than, in my opinion, more than two times to me. So I'm gonna click that and now let me hit play. See it renders a lot slower, but your final will look really, really good. I mean, way, way better than what that was. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that, go back to the beginning, and let's go to export this thing. Go to render, and say render has this export tab up here at the top. And as long as you have, and you got export in here too, as long as you have all this set up, and you hit export now, you see how fast it's going? I mean, we're only doing, uh, yeah, we're only exporting 20 frames. So it's not like we're doing, it's not going to get to where the smoke is rising up. Not in that short amount of frames. Okay. Almost done. All right. So that's done. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna rewind that pretty much again, reset it, go back to simulation and turn that 2x off so I can continue in here what I was doing. All right, let's see, I'm gonna switch back to default here and look at that from this angle. Okay, one thing you can do too, uh, I almost completely forgot about this. There's so many things to cover in one video. Okay, I'm gonna pause it and see how this is not very sharp. Um, if you go to, I believe it's in simulation, and no, it's not simulation. Shading, scene. I'll find it eventually. Mm, simulation, masking visual. Can't never remember where this stuff is at sometimes. 
Go back here again. No, I know it's not in that. Shading. Find it eventually. Oh, right here. Okay. Rendering. I didn't see that tab. So if you go to the shading tab and go shading nodes or and go to rendering tab, you'll see this ray matte sharpening. That's something they added in version one before they released it. Uh, if you click that, you barely see anything happening here, but smoke sharpening. See that? Without it, with it all the way up to 500, I do about 300 on that one. And flames, I do about 200. And temperature, I usually keep about that. So 100, 200, 300. You can play around with those. Um, it's hard to see the flame part. I mean, so you can see it like that, right? A lot more detail inside there. So let's just do that 300 as well. Because what I'm going to do, and make that 200, what I'm going to do is make it even sharper than that by going to video processing. This is where this play is a good effect. And you go to its sharpening here and see it, it even adds more sharpening to that. So you'll see it goes a little too far there. So either keep it at 100 or make it half that. Let's leave it at 100 for now. Temperature. I would keep temperature down. Flames, you can bring up some. And the fuel, you know, we're not rendering out fuel, so you won't see that. Leave it at default. Okay. So there you go. That's what it will look like now. A lot sharper, a lot better. And of course, if you go, once you've done all that, if you go back to simulation and your computer's strong enough and you get a size and put that 2x or even higher, I'm um, always doing my final at 4x if I can. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and I'll probably speed up this process because it is really hard to move around. Um, I could pause it, of course. Pause. And now move around. So you can move around a lot easier when it's paused. Position it and then hit spacebar again to play. See a lot more details happening. And let me pause it again and see what this is set on. Okay, I'm going to put that on high. It's going to go real slow, but look at the, show you the difference in detail here. That's on high. I'm going to hit uh, control one. That's low. Control two is medium. Not bad. Control three is the high where it looks a lot better. I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to try to back out with the mouse wheel because you're not going to be that close to it anyway. I'm going to pause it and pull this down here and then hit spacebar again and just watch it. Watch it build up to see what what it will look like with all the settings we've done in this video. And see how much more detail that is, especially in the smoke. Yeah. But I try to do a lot of videos on my home computer, but I don't know if you got two kids, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. The five-year-old is wild right now so it's hard to record anything <laughs> so I have to try to sneak it in while they're at school okay I'm gonna pause that hit spacebar and pause again and I'm paused and look around this thing you know look at that that smoke detail is so good looking So you can imagine once you've exported it, this quality or even higher, how good it's going to look in the final animation. Alrighty. Well, that's going to be it for me today. And I'll see you next time. And be sure to try out Embergen. They got a free trial right now. And there will probably always be a free trial. And later on when they come out version 2, they're going to add a lot of really cool things, which you can see on their website. If you dig around, you'll find their, I guess, their roadmap to see what they're planning on adding. And you can even find a video uh, through their site that takes them to a YouTube channel that shows a sneak peek at version 2 and, and some other things they're making. They're making a liquid gin 
that's all about fluid simulation. And um, they're making one called Geogen, which is, as far as I can tell, generates planets, maybe. I mean, geology. I mean, geograph. I don't know what it does. It, it looks like it makes land, and they even have a volcano in there, and ocean, and all kinds of cool stuff. So can't wait to see that come out. But anyway, that's it. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please help me out by subscribing and liking this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.